need some competition out here. Come on. The other thing happens to you. I will keep it on. Interested in promoting your brand, business, or talent on Hip Hop News Uncensored? Hit me up right now at advertise at hiphopun.com. That's advertise at hiphopun.com. Hit me ASAP. Very affordable rates. Now to our regularly scheduled program. So, so my thing is, yeah, I said, why can't I apologize to this man and say, hey, man, I'm sorry that you took it that way. I'm not sorry for me protecting the art of comedy. No, but by the way I said it, it might come off like, man, because I know he knows he's in the realm of comedy. He does respect it. He told me that. And he goes, and for people who are, that are giants in comedy going, oh man, why are you doing that shit? It, it's like, it's hurting him because he's looked up to a lot of comedians. So I took that as a big compliment. So I owe him that apology. I have no you know, because I interviewed him with Lord Jamar and right. Raw Digger, Yadamine Podcast. Shout out to the Yadamine Podcast. Yeah. And so he was real cool as fuck, you know what I'm saying? And so a uh, shout out to Nick Cannon for making that happen, yeah. by the way. Yeah. And so we good. We are good. I'm going to see him. He's going to be doing my podcast at, uh, later on. And yeah, we are all good, no man. No beef on no level at all. There was no big. They just made it out to be. I don't mind the publicity now. You everywhere today. You everywhere today. I'm like, y'all, I be. <laughs> I'll be waiting on some like, little opportunity to ask. <laughs> Speak, speaking on the culture, man, and, and speaking on criticism, a lot of criticism you also received and has to do with the documentary you did on Cosby. Now, oh, I dropped the video. You see the pudding, and I got the bit oh, bitches, yeah. and you see, <laughs> and when they put my dick in the pussy, I got the pudding in the boot. And the pussy, and I saw it, then, and then I raped her. <laughs> a lot of people, man, a lot of people on Viral Hip Hop News saying that you playing, you playing both sides of the, of the coin, man. They saying that you, you, you playing a one side of pro black, but then at the same time you kind of sideways doing it. But you know how people are. But I just that wanted to come on here and talk about that because a lot of people are saying it. So what's your thoughts on that after the fact, doing the documentary and what the naysayers are saying? I wish people would understand, would actually define what pro-blackness is. Mm -hmm. These motherfuckers be thinking pro-blackness is one aspect. Pro-blackness is also critiquing people who do wrong also. It's both. It's not. Mm -hmm. First of all, I used to work for Cosby, you fucking idiots. I used to work <laughs> right. for him. Yep. So K Kamau Bell called me and said, hey, and Kamau's from Chicago like me. Kamau, I know Kamau. Kamau said, yo. I'm about to, you know, we filmed it in 2020, 2020. Okay. We filmed it a week and a half before pandemic. Around this, around this time. And then, okay. I did, I shot it in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. And so he said, man, I'm going to be talking about Cosby, man. I want you to be on it. I'm going to go, I'm going in. I said, fuck it. I'll, I'll do it. I'm not going to, I think I'm going to bring some balance to it. And if a lot of people who've watched it have said, you did a good ass job, dude. You didn't dog him like that. You were funny. You balanced it out because I was giving my honest yeah. opinion. I wasn't there to tear down Bill Cosby. What I was doing was building him up too, because the accomplishments that Cosby, from the 60s to the 70s to the 80s, this man, four decades, he changed television. Yes, sir. The image of black people, he changed. The education for black students, do you know the matriculation at HBCUs went up during the Cosby Show, different world. Yeah, schools where black people were going to college, influence wanted to be like, you know, they wanted to be educated, they wanted to be well groomed, they wanted because of Cosby, mm -hmm. people wanted to produce shit, they wanted to hire black people. It was Cosby was changing the face of America through television, man, like literally. But when I worked for him, I worked for him. You know, I I, I was an audience coordinator for his uh, CBS show Cosby. It was after the old Cosby show when that was one of my first jobs that I had coming from Chicago. That was one of my first jobs, man. I worked for him for six months. That was when his son was murdered. I was there. Um, 
And I lived in Queens at the time, Long Island City. I used to walk to Kaufman Astoria Studios right next to Sesame Street. Mm. Mm. You know the song, Can You Tell Me How to Get? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Motherfucker, I knew how to get there, bitch. <laughs> you, I'm going to be honest. I was frantic. When I when I they took me on a tour of Sesame Street, son. <laughs> yeah. Whoa! I said, there go Grover, there go Elmo, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> I almost start crying, and I was like, Can you can tell me how to, how to get to Sesame Street. <laughs> Sunny day. <laughs> Damn. Man. But uh. Yeah. Man, listen, I did it. First of all, we are, we are, we're grown ups, man. You're going to do what you feel like doing. I felt like I needed to do that, that documentary because it was, I said I was going to, I knew I was going to bring balance to it. And I hope people didn't misinterpret what I did. And a lot of people that I know who are very good critiques, they'll tell me the truth. They said, nah, you fucking, you were perfect for that. You brought, because it's a heavy subject, man. Mm hmm. Cosby, the whole rape thing. Hey, man, a lot of us have been accused accused of rapes and shit. People, women calling us, and you'd be like, I didn't do that shit. Mm -hmm. It happens to a lot of us, you know? Um, but I just, I was more disappointed going, this man built up so much shit. And then when I said it in the video, I say, yo, he even has a video of how to put, put Spanish fly in a girl's drink on the Larry King live show. Wow. Now is that my fault or is that Cosby's fault? Uh -oh. If he did it, that's, that's on him. He's on Larry King live going, so you just take a pin and you put it in the drink and oh boy, it, you see the shit? <laughs> no, I haven't seen and Larry it. Larry no. King is like, and Larry King is going, yeah, how do we do it? How, how is it done? <laughs> Damn, get it, yep. So, but you gotta understand there's two way a two way street. Cosby was coming up at a time where it was free love. There was drugs. There was, he even said it in a de deposition that, yeah, I gave women drugs. They, it was consensual. Like, yeah, we gave women drugs. We did that. We did it. Cause you know, in the sixties, it was wild as fuck. Mm -hmm. These people lived hard in the fifties and sixties. They were seventies and eighties. Mm -hmm. It was like cocaine, all kinds of shit. But then you got other women saying the same thing that had happened to them. So, if a hundred, I'm saying if a hundred women are saying, I mean, I don't know. I was like, is it, is, could he have done something? But I, I knew some women nice. that were actually assaulted by him, but never reported him, mm -hmm. never reported him. That's what I, you know, so, you know. Um, Did you believe that story? I mean, I was, I was, I was 50, 50. I don't know. I'm like, right. well, wow. but because people get, some people get raped. Yeah, yeah. that's true. You know, some people do that shit, and then some people don't, and some women lie. Yeah. You know, I've been lied on, and I've never raped a woman in my motherfucking life, bro. No. I've never, I don't even, listen, if a girl rolls her eyes, I walk away. Mm -hmm. If she goes, I'd be mm -hmm. like, all right, bye. <laughs> <laughs> right. I don't grab girls, touch them. You know how guys be touching them? I don't mm -hmm. do that kind of shit. But if a woman gets mad, some women, some get women get mad at you, they'll just make up some shit. Yeah, he did this to me. Because you can have consensual sex with somebody and then they just get mad at you because something didn't work out. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It seems like nowadays you got to have a contract to kiss somebody. Like before you kiss, yeah. you like sign right here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are you going to use tongue? Then this one right there. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to suck on your titty. The left one, sign right there. Uh, right, right, right titty, talk right there. Okay, could you put your initial there? Okay. <laughs> oh, now, now I'm gonna stick my dick and wait the tip. Okay, sound right there. <laughs> it's like you gotta have a contract yeah. for each body part, man. Seriously, you know it's it. And so, um, another thing with Cosby is I noticed every time he tried to buy NBC, mm. shit would come up. Mm. Like the first time he tried to wanted to buy NBC in the '90s, they brought up his illegitimate daughter. Mm -hmm. Some girl said, I'm her, I'm your daughter. And that distracted everything from him buying NBC. He tried it again. And then the allegations came out. Mm. So, you know, it's known 
in America, it seems that every time a black person gets a certain to a certain amount of level of power, they find ways to crush it. When I look at Michael Jackson and all the property he owned, he owned Sony and the Beatles. And you look at Prince who owned all his, you look at different Sam Cooke. Yep. Yeah. I'm saying the history. I don't know if it's conspiracy, but I noticed there's a pattern. Yeah. And so I think maybe they knew a lot of stuff about Cosby, but they were like, if he keeps trying to buy this fucking network, we gonna, all right, he keeps trying to buy it. I don't know, I don't know. This is just me theorizing, you right. know? Right. I don't know if there were some people that had something against him said, all right, we gonna fix you, motherfucker. I don't know, you know what I'm saying? So also the problem with Cosby, remember when Cosby would always have something to say about the black community? Yep. Right. He would be like, you need to put in your pants. You're not reading. Your kids are stupid. They need to read because they have the pants out and their booties hanging and they're not going to school. You know? mm -hmm. So people were like, okay, man, that's cool. I get it, but motherfucker. And so, yeah, so it's like half and half. You know, it's I every I I feel half and half about it. Yeah. You know. I feel like he could have done some of it because he was a powerful dude and there was probably some women that wanted to get on maybe because in our business, men and women want to get on and some of them will do yeah. whatever it takes. Some, I don't know everybody. I don't know. I'm not mentioning any specific names, but there's some cats that will do whatever to get in. Mm. It's no different than Harvey Weinstein. There were people that went to Harvey Weinstein a few times, Yeah, you know, so I wasn't there for all that shit. When I was working for Cosby, I didn't see no foul shit going on. I didn't see anything. You know what I'm saying? I saw some, I saw, I would see women hanging around, but that's, that's a, a, a sitcom set. I mean, people hang right. around, good looking people hang around. So I never saw anything crazy. He was always professional, you know? So, you know, I don't know what was going on, you know, but it just looked, it didn't look right. Cause they all had the same record. They, they all talked the same. He did this to me. He drugged. Yeah. <clears throat> and then half of them up. I'm like, what if everybody's lying? I don't know. Right. Like, even know. transferring to current day, you see people like Trey songs and Chris Brown also being accused of the same type of stuff. Now, a lot of people were saying on hip hop news uncensored in the comment section, people were saying, are oh, they coming after him? Cause he owns his masters. And so we think about now Chris Brown. Wait, and wait, Chris Brown owns his masters. Yeah. That's what they say. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Oh fuck. So now they're saying uh, as soon as he owned his masters, that well, came owned, out. it was a couple years ago where that news came out, but people are saying that because possibly because of that, you know, power. Well, what movement. about when Snoop Dogg got death row and then a sexual assault came out? Right. Mm -hmm. Right. God damn. Absolutely. Yeah. Right in the middle of him crip walking. Oh, damn. <laughs> oh what? Right. Yep. That, you know what I'm saying? So I don't know if this is a pattern of shutting down black power, ownership, or I don't know. I don't know. I, be, I believe that there are women that are paid to lie. I believe that dudes actually do do that shit. You know? Yeah, fuck that sure. Because there, not every woman is lying. Right. But there's a lot of women that are lying. Yeah. So it's tough, man. It's a tough, you know what I mean? Dr. Cosby, I, ever reach out to you who? and talk? Did Mr. Cosby ever reach out to you? To me? Hell no. <laughs> I mean, I know he's reached out what? to various people, but he I didn't I didn't know. No, I, I was doing I was working for Cosby in 98, bro. Okay. So I don't Cosby now, that nigga don't remember me. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be like, right. God free, motherfucker. <laughs> oh, you think you're slick. <laughs> I know he shouted out Faison and I think uh Bootsy. So I was just wondering. Yeah, he shouted out Faison? Yeah. yeah. Why did he shout out Faison? He was just, he was taking them, you know what I mean? Just holding them down while he was locked up, basically calling it bullshit and stuff. And he, he remembered that. And Bootsy yeah, too, I believe. For sure. That's beautiful, man. That's cool. Yeah. I don't know if I haven't gotten any calls from nobody. I just know some people say, oh, so now you on Cosby? I go, hey, Einstein, watch the whole fucking documentary. Yeah. You see one trailer and go, oh, man, this motherfucker talking about yeah. Cosby now. <laughs> Yeah. See, since you have the attention span of a crack baby, that's where you get your fucking info from. <laughs> what you do is watch, 
Because this is a motherfucker that ain't got no time to <laughs> go for context. Again, right. yep. you just talk a shit because you see a trailer. That's a clickbait, bro. That's just how you get people pulled in. Mm. Watch the whole thing. Nobody reads anymore. Nobody wants to watch, read shit anymore. Nobody wants to learn all different aspects. Everybody wants a little, okay, that's it. Yeah. You know, what the fuck, man? Wow. You know? And so, you know, I, I'm glad I did it. It came out the way I'm, I'm glad it came out. I didn't do anything to spite him or anything. I, I, I wanted to have a just uh, interview, you know? Because I wanted to talk about me working for the guy, because it was a big honor to work for that dude. Mm -hmm. As a as a comedian coming from Chicago, grow, growing up on Cosby, and I'm right. in front of this man for six months. Get the fuck out of here! And I get to watch his genius. What? Mm -hmm. Shit! I even have a great story about him. One time I was doing my sets, you know, because I'm, you know, you gotta. A audience coordinator, pretty much, you warm up the audience, you tell them about the different parts of the, the set, and I bring out Dr. Cosby, Felicia Rashad, Madeline Kahn, okay. I'm bringing people out, that's what I do, that's my job. And so I was, you know, I'll be throwing down, you know, I'm trying to keep my job, so I'm being right. funny. One time, Cosby came out, and the, one of the producers said, hey, um, Dr. Cosby wants to do a set. Mm. Wow. He wanted to do a set, comedy. He wanted yeah, to stand right, up. Yeah, right. I was mur I was murking. I was because I'm right. just trying to keep my job, right? Mm -hmm. So, so he comes and he does his set, kills, destroys the place, and tosses the mic to me and goes, "Follow that shit." <laughs> he cursed too. Ooh. What? Nah, he, he just said, follow oh, that. No. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you a dick joke he told me, which was weird, but <laughs> but he said follow that. So it, I brought him out to challenge me almost, and I didn't expect it, but that was such a compliment to me mm -hmm. that this man was like, "Man, let me get some of this shit real quick." Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm gonna show this young motherfucker what time it is. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and I remember when um when um I was walking down the hallway. And I see Cosby. He goes, I want to tell you something. I said, what's up? He goes, why is it that when you pee in the bathroom, you got to wash your hands? It doesn't make sense because your dick has been in your pants. It hasn't touched anything. So why do we got to wash your hands? Because your dick is in your pants. <laughs> and I, and he just goes, oh. And I go, what the <laughs> fuck was that? Right. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> But, I've seen him, to share, but I used to hear him curse, though. He used to be funny because he used to go, because for him to curse, it always sounded weird. He'd be right. like, listen, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> listen, no. What the fuck are you doing? So was it that he didn't want to curse in, on camera or he just Right, not on camera, but off camera. He's like, what motherfucker, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> But it didn't sound too mean because it's just Cosby cursing. What right. the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> right. 